227 is what she was playing. 227 is what we're going to sing. <clears throat> Number 227, The Cleansing Wave. Christ will do for you. It'll cleanse you, make you white as snow, wash away your sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. The only way that you can have your sins washed away is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, welcome this morning. Good to see you. And uh, those that uh, might be seeing this uh, later by video, uh, however they uh, get it. I don't know about all those things, but I know that it has been going out. And, and so it's good to know that uh, other people can also view and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hear these wonderful songs and hymns that have been written and just rejoice with us in what God has done, who he is, and the great salvation through Jesus Christ. Number 129.
you ought to be happy if you're saved. You don't have anything to be woeful and sad about. Get saved. Know the Lord Jesus Christ personally, God Almighty. Uh, and you should have the joy, peace, and love of God flowing through you and with you. No man can take that from you. You can have that. He offers that. <clears throat> In a moment, we'll be singing the light of the world. These songs have a lot to do with light, that one. Uh, the, at the cross, I first saw the light. And uh, we're gonna sing the uh, 213, the light of the world is Jesus. But I wanna read a, <clears throat> a missionary letter here first. Gonna have some prayer letters today that we have. and. And uh, prayer letters and prayer, actually. Uh, we're also probably going to look at Mark 10 and continue our study there with blind Bartimaeus. So uh, that's what the light songs were about, seeing the light, seeing Jesus Christ. And uh, as we look at... Uh, blind Bartimaeus. I guess I didn't change that at the top in the bulletin, so that's why it's, it says uh, prayer letters and prayer. And, uh, and Bartima Bartimaeus, okay. Had a note from the Ingrams, and they are not going to be going to Florida this year. Uh, he continues on with his worldwide uh, internet counseling contact that he does but uh, they their pastor they at their home church there in Pennsylvania still hasn't they hasn't been filled their pastorate it's been vacant and so he's on that committee to see about getting a pastor they did get just have an interim pastor come now uh, but he wants to stay there for that plus the uncertainty of the uh, yeah of everything the travels and things uh, you know, last year they had a terrible time, and already this year he said they're having some problems with um, getting uh, getting around because of, and like getting down to Florida to, to work down there like they have for so many years during the summer, or during the winter, yeah. Uh, so anyway, they're not going down there. And we have a note here from the Childs family. It was good to hear from the Childs in Papua New Guinea. And he says, the December, this December we celebrated 10 years of working in the village of Tirakave. It is amazing to look back and be reminded of what the Lord has done. At least 30 adults have accepted Christ as their savior and most of these faithfully attend church, church services each week. We praise the Lord for the power of the gospel and for the part that he has allowed us to have in their salvation. What a blessing it is to be reminded that these dear people no longer have to fear an eternity separated from God, but instead they can look forward to being with him eternally in heaven. In our last prayer letter, I shared with you about Jackson's testimony of faith in Christ. What a blessing it has been to see him continue to uh, see him continue to witness to his family and neighbors. Jackson and I were able to have a five-week Bible study with one of the men to whom he is witnessing. This man, Roman, and his family listened intently to the plan of salvation and understand what God's word says. Typical of people in this area, they want time to think over everything before committing to faith in Christ alone. Would you pray for Roman and his wife and that they would not delay but would accept Christ soon. So that's Roman and his wife. <clears throat> On Christmas Day, we had a wonderful celebration with our church family. As has been our tradition since we arrived in Tirakave, the entire church met in the living room of our home and I read the story of Christ's birth. Everyone enjoyed having a cup of tea, after which we cut the beautiful nativity cake which Lauren made for the occasion. Uh, from this time of fellowship, we moved outside and began cooking the food for a special Christmas lunch, Man mainly rice and greens. 
with a little chicken and pork. Traditionally, we play relay games and team games after the meal. However, the Lord chose to send a downpour of rain, so they enjoyed fellowship indoors instead. As you think of our family in this coming year, would you pray that God would give us special wisdom in how to help our believers continue to mature in their walk with God? God has given us so many opportunities to share the good news of salvation, but we need God to show us exactly how and when to share his word to those in need. In Christ, Ben Childs. So remember, they're praising the Lord for their 10 years in Terracave. Uh, Hitz has just went through that too. See, they, all, there's a number of these people, uh, uh, the, uh, of course, Aaliyah and Jacob and uh, who else am I missing? But anyway, of that, that family and, the, and then the childs, they knew the childs because they were all in school together, all in Bible school. And so the Hitzes have just passed their 10 years up there and they're doing about the same thing as far as people in the church. And we prayed that the Lord would give them a quick harvest in these places, these fields that they're in. Uh, and so churches have been established, how wonderful that is. But um, Praise the Lord for giving us 10 years in Tiracave and for a wonderful Christmas celebration. And pray for Roman and his wife to accept Christ as Savior. Uh, keep praying for God to use the personal Bible studies to help mature the Christians in our church. And pray that God will give us strength and wisdom as we share God's word with our community. You know, I've realized in the last few years how important that is for these young men on the mission field or young men, uh, young pastors in churches or whatever, <clears throat> to have strength and wisdom as they share and, and do the work that God has given them. And you know, I'm older now and I could have, uh, I can still maintain wisdom that God gives me, uh, but the strength is waning. And so it's uh, tougher and tougher to do all the things that you once did. You just can't do them all. So you have to have wisdom and which ones not to do and how to carry on for the glory of God. So that's from uh, Ben Childs there in Papua New Guinea. Okay, let's take the songbook now and go to the light. <clears throat> 213, the light of the world is Jesus. A dark world, but there's a light. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday is the way The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light which coming for thee. Sweet be the light held on the mountain. Once I was born, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. No darkness have we.
and he says now that he's gone, uh, ye are the light of the world. And so we're the lights that he left here, shining in a dark world. And right now we need to shine as bright as ever as we see the world turning into, the church is going into apostasy and the world turning after the prince and power of the air, uh, as is prophesied in the word of God that's gonna happen. And so it's not a surprise to Christians who have read their Bible and who understand what God is doing as the nations are gathered together. And so to stop that uh, isn't going to be possible because it is going to happen. Now it can be delayed, God might delay it, uh, if, if, if those Christians, those people that are called by his name will humble themselves and pray and seek his face, uh, and it, he could delay a while. We don't, because we don't know the day or hour. He doesn't either know the second coming time. The Father only. <clears throat> but he is the light. Uh, he left and left his light shining in the world with us. <clears throat> Marianne, could you give me a glass of water, please? <clears throat> oh. Thank you. Okay, let's take our Bibles and turn to Mark 10. We have a few more uh, letters and things to read here, but we're going to go ahead and get into the Bible here. <clears throat> Look at Mark chapter 10, just a few verses. Um, verse 40, beginning in verse 46, with blind Bartimaeus. And if I'd have thought about it, I'd have had Marianne sing the song about, uh, that we have in our uh, Brookside book about that. But uh, I didn't think about it. So, well, I did several times, but not to tell her. <laughs> <clears throat> so, verse 46 of Mark chapter 10. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Now, you know, you can learn things from a verse like that as far as the Bible interpretation goes. Uh, notice that it's blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. So what does that tell you about when you see bar in front of somebody's name? Um, they're after their father, okay? So now it's a bar Timaeus, the son of Timaeus. Uh, so you can see things in the word of God that are right there for you to see, but many people don't ever see them. So he sat by this highway side begging. Verse 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, listen, if you're the blind man, why well, you'd want God to have mercy on you. Well, let me tell you that there's a lot of blind people, spiritually blind, that can't see Jesus Christ uh, in the world. There might be spiritually blind people that are here or that are watching this or that hear it on CD or whatever. Listen, if you are spiritually blind, you've never been made to see the light and your eyes have never been opened by the gift of salvation from God, then you need to do that. You need to see that you have the light and that you can see the light. Don't walk in darkness until it's too late. So uh, people were telling him, oh, don't, don't. And you know what happens? You go out there and you're the light of the world and you know what uh, this wicked world is saying now? They're saying, you have no business here. We even have a governor that said that a number of times in the last few years, that uh, Christians have no place in his state. They're not New Yorkers. That's conservative Bible-believing Christians, by the way. He never, he didn't always uh, <clears throat> bring that out, but that's exactly where he's at. As you know, now all of a sudden he's religious and he's quoting the Bible and he's saying that, oh, come on, Christians, come on, we can do it. Uh, Christians, listen, Christian to him and Christian to these politicians, like we saw the other week on one of, them, uh, one of these uh, services, was it's just not... Um, it, it, it means nothing. 
uh, to the world. Listen, when all the major uh, politicians that are for uh, same-sex uh, same uh, marriage and that are for abortion, uh, when all these people uh, are against what God says should be, when they're calling, they're doing away, calling your father and mother, your father and mother, you can't call your children son and daughter, and all these kind of things. Uh, listen, when it's banned from Congress by the Speaker of the House, uh, that's wickedness. And she says she's a Christian and believes the Bible. Just like Hillary Clinton is a Christian and believes the Bible and uses it to make all of her decisions in life. Listen, don't give me that. Try it by the Word of God. The Word of God will tell you, uh, by your, their fruit ye shall know them. Uh, listen, <laughs> the fruit's pretty rotten up there in places, isn't it? And it's not from God, okay? It's following after the prince and power of the air that's ruling in this world. Don't forget that. Uh, Jesus Christ is not yet on the throne on this world. Oh yes, he's won the victory and he's on the throne of heaven, but he's moving that throne to Jerusalem, to this city, to this uh, earth. And it's coming soon. Uh, could be within seven years, we'll see. But <clears throat> anyway, it will happen. We're not as scoffers that say, oh, we're the promise of his coming. Uh, the promise is sure, and he is coming again. Uh, so you need to have your eyes opened to the things of God, to the mercy of Jesus Christ. Uh, and so these, uh, this man is crying out, Bartimaeus is crying out, uh, about uh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they tried to stop him. The world tries to stop Christians from evangelizing, from telling others about the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and so it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. Uh, Jesus Christ said it's going to be as it was in the days of Noah, the days of uh, Lot. That's pretty bad. Just go back and read what it was like. Uh, so uh, that's bad. And uh, it's going to be like that again. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but when, if the Christians, the genuine Christians were taken out of here now, uh, it would probably be about like that, wouldn't it? Because who would be left? No Christians. The Spirit's been withdrawn from his wooing. And so it is that we have the time now to look to the Son of God. We have the time now to be saved. Uh, be saved now because you have no promise of tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come for you. It may never come for me, but I know where I'm going to spend eternity. It doesn't make any difference uh, <clears throat> about that because I've already settled it according to God's word. So here's B blind Bartimaeus. Now, if you read this same uh, account, Matthew uses usually uses... Uh, multiple people when there's multiple people involved. And so uh, in Matthew, you'll see that it says there were two blind men in this very account that happened when he came into Jericho. Uh, but it doesn't make any difference who they zero in on. Here, uh, Mark and Luke, they zero in on Bartimaeus, one man. Uh, and, uh, and these men are blind and they wanna see. And so how in the world can you see if you're blind? Well, spiritually, you have to come to Jesus Christ. He alone is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come unto the Father but by him. And so it is that uh, uh, you have to be spiritually awakened. You have to see the light. Many charged him. So people are against letting him know that Jesus Christ was there and could do anything, isn't, isn't he? And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Uh, so Jesus Christ just stopped and says, Well, we're not going any farther until we handle this matter. And so he commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying, Well, good news here, be of good cheer, good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Uh, so that's comforting when the Lord calls you. 
You need to respond and say, yes, Lord, uh, I want the light. Uh, verse 15, and he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And so he was called and he came to Jesus. And we're in Mark chapter 10 and verse 50. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Uh, blind Bartimaeus here, looking for the Lord, looking for the light. Uh, he couldn't see and his friend there. And so they needed to be able to see the light. Jesus came and he gave him not only physical light, but spiritual light, didn't he? Verse 51, Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. So the Lord asked him, what's your need? Listen, when you need to be saved, you need to know it. Uh, you, you have to come to God understanding that he is uh, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. That's, uh, and tells us that in Hebrews 11, chapter six, uh, verse six, excuse me, Hebrews 11. And verse six says, uh, but without faith, is it impossible to please him? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Uh, you're going to come to God? You better believe that he is. Uh, you can't say, there is no God. God, I don't, want, I don't know anything about How can you come to him? You don't know him. You don't know and believe that he is. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, you know that there's a God. Just look around you and see creation. Uh, see what God has done. Uh, you know that there's a God. Diligently seek him and come to him, and he won't cast you away. You can be his child. So uh, back in uh, Mark 10 again, Jesus answered and said to him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. He saw the light. Uh, notice that it says, thy faith hath made thee whole. He had faith that this was indeed the son of David, the son of God, and that he could give him life. And so he came and not only got his sight, but got his spiritual life also. And he followed him. Uh, and then another in Luke, it says that, and, and Matthew, that they followed Jesus. So the, uh, we see that here, uh, that people are spiritually blind. Yeah, this, the man was physically blind and spiritually blind, and he got his sight. We need to get our sight. We need to look to Jesus, who alone is the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman, nobody comes to the Father but by him. And so you, that's the only way. And you must believe that he is. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What a wonderful thing. And you can come. Have your sins washed clean by his blood shed on Calvary. How wonderful to see these things. Okay, we're going to stop there in our Mark study. I got, have a couple more prayer letters that we're reading and uh, a few other things here. So, uh, another prayer letter here. This is from missionaries in Nepal, Kathmandu. I do realize that they're, they've been over there since 19... Wow. 78, 76, 78, <clears throat> that's where they met uh, and then got married and raised their children. Uh, <clears throat> but the Clouds, David and Linda Cloud. Hello, friends in Christ. We trust that all is well with you. Everything is fine here and the church and ministry are going along with much blessing in spite of the worldwide coronavirus situation. Next week, we have scheduled our first Bible conference since last January. We would ask your prayer for that. Most things have opened up here except schools, theaters, and tourism. We don't have permission from the government, but we believe we have the Lord's open door, so we are proceeding accordingly. 
This is the basis on which we restarted full church services a few weeks ago, and we haven't had any problems. As we reported at the time, in April 2018, two of the preachers we had ordained and had treated as sons led half of the church in a split. They did it when I was on a preaching trip to the States. In the main service where visitors were present, they railed on me as Hitler and Pol Pot and told many lies. We found out later that the plot had been in progress for a long time. They had been poisoning the minds of carefully targeted members. They stole all the church funds, including about $40,000 in the building fund. A few months ago, the split entirely collapsed. One of the two preachers, Dorge, uh, repented and came before the churchman with his wife to testify that it had all been done in anger and pride and deceit. They gave us the equipment, such as a keyboard, the uh, soundboard, cabinets, etc., that they'd stolen, which were purchased with the stolen money. Uh, and Dorge is ready to return the 40,000 building fund. But uh, Deepak, the other preacher in the split, is a co-signer on the account and he has not yet agreed. See, these two preachers were the treasurers and the co-signers on the account, their account there. And while Brother Cloud was back here preaching, they stole all the funds, all the equipment, everything from the church and left. That was over two years ago. You remember, some of you remember when we read those things uh, as they happened. Uh, now, jo Dorge is one that we prayed for long before his salvation. If you remember Dorge for, uh, well, 10 years anyway, I would guess. Uh, and uh, now he's repented and bringing the things back. However, um, Deepak, the other preacher in the split, is a co-signer on the account, and he has not yet agreed to return it. A couple of weeks ago, he met Dorje and our church treasures at the bank with the promise to sign the account over. But instead, he gave them a letter that we must sign that we will never say that he did anything wrong. That's a, that's a tough place to be, isn't it? We would ask your prayers for this business to be completed. The split was very difficult, of course, but it greatly benefited our church spiritually, which is a rare thing. Today we have spiritual unity to an extent we've never personally witnessed before. And we have never before seen such spiritual growth in individual lives and in families. Such gospel fruit and such an effectual open door. In Christ, David and Linda Cloud. Uh, <clears throat> now they have been uh, spent their whole lives over there ministering and they are seeing the biggest outpouring of uh, believers of uh, the Holy Spirit there and reaping in the Nepal that has ever happened in history in that country. They've started a number of churches and they have people, a good sound people uh, that are there in the church. After the split, these splits can actually strengthen a church and we've seen that too. So uh, that's not something you want. It's terrible to go through. It's awful to have to deal with, but you have to follow what God wants you to do. <clears throat> okay, well, a um, few more things on, the, on side notes here since we've got just a few minutes. Let's, uh, <clears throat> talking about praying, talking about praying, what should we pray for? Well, here's a note about praying for the mystery of iniquity. How do you pray for the mystery of iniquity? Uh, inter intercessory prayer is participating with God in his business, and so we need to know what God's business is, and we need to pray along with God. Uh, it, the, um, it's not for our will to be done, it's for God's will is what we're praying for. Uh, it's finding God's will in scripture and praying according to his will. 1 Corinthians 3.9 mentions that, that we are laborers together with God. And so we need to realize that, uh, that he has chosen us. 
born again people to be his laborers with him with him don't forget that part with god so he's chosen us for those the, the things that he wants done in the world evangelism church building home building uh, raising our children that's all part of what we are labors together with him to do so in his word he tells us what he's doing we know the eternal outcome of all this stuff uh, the preaching of the gospel he wants us to preach the gospel uh, he taught us uh, in Luke Luke 10 2 says that uh, it said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that will send forth labors into the harvest now, that's something you can pray for all the time that's something God you're in with God that's what he desires and, and so pray uh, that he will send forth labors into the harvest uh, <clears throat> Paul instructed the churches to pray for the ministry of God's word for wisdom blessing on the preaching boldness deliverance from wicked men and prosperous journeys and so forth uh, all through the writings that he had the mystery of iniquity, who is it? Well, this is the devil's program to put man on the throne in the world. And that's what the, everything's about right now as we see the wickedness abounding and coming together as the nations. Uh, it's been operating since the days of the apostles. It's not something that's new. The mystery of iniquity in, entails the preparation of a global government, a global economy, the destruction of nationalism, anarchy, apostasy, war on biblical Christianity the destruction of historic America, the strengthening of the United Nations, uh, calling uh, anything that exalts man and dethrones God. That's, what, that's where we're at. And so what, what you see these things that are so horrible going on, you, and it's, well, it's the mystery of iniquity, the prince and power of the air that is working. Uh, but there's a time coming soon, we just mentioned that earlier, uh, that he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Listen, when the Christians are out of here, then the world will truly be like it was in the days of Noah and the days of Lot, won't it? Uh, who's going to be left if the Christians are gone? The true Christians. Not the politicians that say they're Christians that uh, have never had any fruit of salvation and they hate God and do everything they can against God. Not those people. That's not who we're talking about. We're talking about genuinely saved, born again Christians that know Jesus Christ alone as their Savior who has reconciled them back to God the Father. And so the restrainer, the Holy Spirit will be taken out of here. Uh, the devil's program will then really put, go into high gear and uh, all these things will be put aside and Christianity will be put down completely as best as the prince and power of the air can do. Now we know that there's still gonna be people saved even during the tribulation period. Uh, God's gonna have his two witnesses in Jerusalem. He's gonna have the 144,000 witnesses and there are going to be many people that are gonna to turn to God when they see the antichrist reigning and the wickedness of the world and what's happening. And so we, we, uh, that's a great thing to look forward to. Uh, how, we have God's word on it. As Christians, we should know these things. And that's why we don't have to be down in the mouth. We don't have to be uh, sad at everything that's happening. We can still have our joy that God gives us. We can still have the peace that passes understanding. Nobody in the world without Christ can have that. You can, if you're a believer, we can have that. <clears throat> so we're laborers together with God. Don't forget it. And uh, as God, God doing these things, we need to realize we can pray for the restraining of the evil, for the good that we can do. We can expect him to answer those prayers. Uh, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which alive and are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words in 1 Thessalonians 4. Now, we talk about the lockdowns around the world. This was an interesting 
a paragraph written here about the big lockdown that's coming. The big lockdown that's coming. Lockdowns dominated the news for 2020, but the really big lockdown is in the future. Uh, Bible prophecy was, uh, was uh, fulfilled literally and precisely in the first coming of Christ, and it will be fulfilled in the same manner in his second coming. As a precursor, the Antichrist will lock down the whole world with his worship program and economic control scheme backed up by the death penalty. It will be a global North Korea. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. That's in Revelation 13. The COVID pandemic is child's play compared with the trouble that looms on the horizon. Billions of people will die during the Great Tribulation from wars, famine, pestilence, earthquakes, totalitarianism on a scale that will make Stalin and Mao seem like choir boys. It is all described in the book of Revelation. <coughs> For those who are interested, it is called the day of the Lord because it will spell doom for the day of man. Uh, we know what's coming. And the Antichrist, yes, the uh, Antichrist will be coming. And the prince and power of the air is just having a heyday right now. Uh, but we know what the end is. And we know what's coming. So we can be joyful. Uh, knowing that we're in the service of the Lord, that we're saved eternally. We don't have to worry about losing our salvation according to the word of God. And so we can continue on uh, joyfully, day by day. We don't know how many days, weeks, years, months. Uh, listen, uh, the apostles were writing and the early writers, the first century, they were talking about, oh, he's at the door, he's coming soon. <laughs> Uh, that was 2,000 years ago. So yeah, we might have a few more months, we might have a few more years, a few more decades, maybe even some centuries, but that's up to the Lord, right? And so we take it a day at a time, just keep going, going, but we're not ignorant of the way, of the things that are going on. One last note about when we talk about coronavirus and the great uh, hazard and the awful thing it is, uh, here's a comparison. We haven't had one of the, we haven't done any updates or done much with coronavirus for a long time. In 2020, that was last year, it's just completed, there were reported worldwide to be 1.8 million deaths associated with COVID-19. This was the big never-ending news, but in the meantime, there were 11 million deaths from communicable diseases other than tuberculosis. 8.2 million deaths from cancer. 5.1 million deaths from smoking. 2.5 million from alcohol. 1.8 million from tuberculosis. 1.4 million from road accidents. 1.1 million from suicide. And then if you want to throw in the largest loss of life, there were estimated over 42 million deaths by abortion. And we're going to make a big deal out of coronavirus. See, what's being done about HIV AIDS? That's a big killer yet today. Tuberculosis worldwide. What are they saying about that? What's happening? Uh, who cares about that? Well, 42 million is much lower than the uh, reality of the, of the abortions worldwide probably uh, <clears throat> because many countries don't even keep statistics on it. And uh, I'm glad to see that there was a, a bill that or something that was, was, was put down where uh, young people could get abortion drugs without their parents knowing and that, that was shut down. So uh, whatever, you know. But what does the Bible say? The wages of sin is death. 
but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord in Romans. And so just a few thoughts today from uh, what's going on in the world, from our missionaries around the world, from the uh, looking at blind Bartimaeus and the need to meet Jesus and see the light, turn on the light. You know, even the Bible says in Corinthians, it, it's, um, if, you're not, if you don't know the Lord, it's just foolishness. Uh, so you need first to know the Lord. And uh, then these things come to light. And you can rejoice in what God has done. Father, thank you, Lord, for this time. Now we ask you to just guide and direct as we continue on for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, God bless you. Good to see you all out.